Frustration is mounting and anger is growing with the liberals and passive politicians. Learn the playbook of those who are trying to destroy our country. From the Blue Collar Professor, he teaches, he leads, he speaks out for truth and justice. Now, the educator of all things conservative, your host, Dr. Gavin Mitchell. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business... 
and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you... uh, Go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Hey, hey, welcome to it, the Wednesday edition of the program, where we continue to take the left of school, exposing them, for who and what they really are, all while arming the hardworking people of this country, like you and me, with the knowledge we need to hold our elected officials accountable. But fear not, unlike those leftist professors out there in academia, you will find no safe zones here. Why? Because we believe in the First Amendment. If you would like to connect with the show, you can do so a handful of ways. We are on the web, www.thegavinmitchellshow.com. You can email me anytime you'd like, Gavin at thegavinmitchellshow.com. And we are on Twitter at The GM Show. So feel free to give us a follow there and send us a tweet. We'd love to hear from you. There is so much going on today in a day that seemed like it would be a, a slow news day. That just hasn't been the case at all. Last night we had primaries in Washington. We'll, we'll cover that. And Donald Trump was in New Mexico and there there were problems. The con man in chief made a trip to Vietnam, another communist country he is trying to bridge the gap with, but there are repercussions there. But first, I want to get to the breaking news of the State Department watchdog decided they were going to audit the Hillary Clinton email situation. And this is the first official report we have gotten on whether Hillary Clinton is in the wrong or if she's telling the truth about the whole situation. And the the results are kind of mixed, but she is not out of the woods. Let's be clear with that. There is an inspector general audit coming. It's not out yet, but Fox news got a hold of a copy somehow, some way. And this audit faults Clinton and her predecessors for poorly managing email and other computer information. The department was, quote, slow to recognize and to manage effectively the legal requirements and cybersecurity risks associated with electronic data communications. It cites longstanding systematic weaknesses related to communication that started well before Clinton's tenure. So if you stop there, there there's a lot of what she said that is true, that she was just carrying on precedent and that she didn't do anything wrong. But while the report said there was many examples of staff using personal accounts for official business, they could only find three cases where officials use non-department accounts on an exclusive basis for day-to-day operations. So what they're saying there is there've been a number of people working for the secretary's office that do use their personal email here and there. But there are only three cases in which the personal email was used as the email medium. The others relied on their state department email as well as their personal email. But these three include Colin Powell, who was former secretary of state 
ambassador to Kenya, Jonathan Scott Grayson and Hillary Clinton. Now, Grayson, and I believe that's how it's pronounced, G-R-A-T-I-O-N. With him, the department initiated disciplinary action against him before he resigned. Quote, the department's response to his action demonstrates how such usage is normally handled with the department's cybersecurity officials become aware of it. And so he was, he was disciplined. He was. Now, while she can claim she was just doing what Colin Powell did, she goes a step further with this BlackBerry. The report said, quote, Secretary Clinton used mobile devices to conduct official business using the personal email account on her private server extensively, as illustrated by the 55,000 pages of material making up approximately 30,000 emails she provided to the department in December 2014. Investigators found, quote, no evidence that Secretary requested or obtained guidance or approval to conduct official business via a personal email account on her private server. Moreover, she had the BlackBerry. The BlackBerry was not a secure device. And she, she carried it with her. And even after being instructed in a confidential email, you can't use that. She replied, I get it, but continued to use it. The biggest problem and, and the smoking gun here is the report specifically accused Clinton of violating department policy by not giving over her emails when she left office. Quote, Secretary Clinton should have preserved any federal records she created and received on her personal account by printing and filing those records at a minimum. Secretary Clinton should have surrendered all emails dealing with department business before leaving government service. And because she did not do so, she did not comply with the department's policies that were implemented in accordance with the Federal Records Act. So there you go. Strike two, right? So she's not just following precedent. She's screwed up here. She screwed up with the BlackBerry. She screwed up by not turning over these emails and filing them properly the way she was supposed to. She just thought they would vanish in thin air, I guess. And then the final one, strike three. The report touched on security risk of of, of the setup with the server in her bathroom, so on and so forth saying that in January 2011, a, quote, non-departmental advisor to President Clinton, who provided technical support to the Clinton email system, told a department official he had to shut down the server because he thought someone was, quote, trying to hack us, end quote. The advisor later, later wrote that same day, we were attacked again, so I shut the server down for a few minutes. So she did compromise what was going on. She was vulnerable. There were at least attempts to hack into the private server, at a minimum, according to this this audit, this report. And so all this nonsense that Clinton is running around saying, oh, it's no big deal, I was following precedent, so on and so forth, it's not true. It's simply not true. And if this is a precursor of what is coming with this FBI investigation, she is in trouble. She's in a lot of trouble because, remember, the FBI has this hacker named Guccifer in their back pocket. They've also provided immunity to her IT guy. And together, the stories that have been leaked is Guccifer got in. And the IT guy is telling them all they want to know. This is serious. This isn't as simple as, oh, well, shucks, I should have used the proper email. We're talking about national security. We're talking about lives that were lost as a result of these compromises. But she seems to sleep well at night. It seems to not be a concern of hers at all. And I don't understand that even a little bit, not not even remotely. Now, out on the campaign trail, Clinton has decided that the one thing she had working for her, because she's not honest, She's never been a good leader. She's not competent, even though her resume has line items. She never did any of those jobs well. She's going to continue this administration's carrying of these policies through the next four years if she's elected. There's nothing good about her. But the one thing she had working for her 
was the Barack Obama effect and the fact that these liberals can make history by electing the first pre- the one, first woman president. They they can write their names in the history book that they voted for her. So what did she do? She mailed out all these these woman cards. Playing off Donald Trump's deal, she's playing the woman card. She plays it too much. People are tired of it. So she mails out all these cards saying, play your woman card too. Here's your woman card. Well, after they polled different focus groups, they realized that was a bad play. Groups such as Angie's List and, and others got involved, and they're like, no, that's that's demeaning. That's not helping your cause. And so she's dropped this whole woman card thing. And so she is no longer running as the female candidate, according to her campaign. She's just a candidate, as she should have been all along. Now, if you add up her experience, her record, her qualifications, whether she did a job successfully or not, how can you honestly cast a vote for her? Are you kidding me? The other day she she went out and Donald Trump said, look, these school shootings are a bad thing. These these gun-free zones make people sitting ducks. And so what I want to do is I want to give whether it's it's a police officer or a security officer that's on these school campuses or trained teachers the opportunity and the right to carry a gun so they can at least fight back, so that they can at least shoot back. Because what we know about these maniacs that walk into schools and, and different gun-free zones and shoot them up, they're cowards. They're weak. And they're not all there. And if we start firing back, they're going to run or they're going to just end it. They're going to put a bullet in their own head and we're going to save lives. And Donald Trump got that. And that's what he was trying to articulate. Now, to be fair, Donald Trump doesn't, he isn't always clear, right? He says some things and you're like, what did he just say? That doesn't make any sense at all. But Hillary Clinton comes out and says, Donald Trump wants to put guns in schools. Not only is that way out in left field, it's dangerous. When in fact, it's quite the opposite. It's not putting guns in schools. It's allowing those that we trust with our kids anyway to arm themselves to protect our kids. It gives them an opportunity to fight back and save lives. It's not dangerous. But Hillary Clinton had much rather just take all the guns up. Mind you, a right that is guaranteed by the Second Amendment. She had just assumed walk all over the Constitution to force her way down our throats. I I just don't know. Like The more I see, the more I read, the more I watch, I just don't understand how anybody can in good faith say that's who I want leading the free world. That's who I want running our country. It makes zero sense to me. And you add to this whole situation, this idea of the Clinton cash and the Clinton foundation and how it's laundered money. And Matt Locke and I talked about it as we recorded the uh, conservative uh, cartel this morning. And there, there are two main sources of cash for the Clinton foundation. One are these big Wall Street banks where she went out to to give her speeches. And I said on the show, the only problem I have with that at all is that the law allows her to do that, allows her to launder that money into her campaign. If the Wall Street people want to hire Hillary Clinton to come talk, knock yourself out. That doesn't seem entertaining or informative to me. I don't know that I would participate. But what do I care? I don't. My problem is that the law is not structured in a way that prevents her from taking the money from the big banks and sticking it in her campaign fund with one or two stops along the way. She's dodging campaign finance law. That's a problem of mine. But we saw that the first domino was falling with the Virginia governor on this situation, and there's a lot of people alluding this is bigger than the cash given by the Chinese guy, that this is actually a probe into the whole Clinton foundation and and the way money's moving and being laundered. But there's a third piece to this thing. 
And that's that money is coming from other countries, not businesses that are headquartered in other countries, from other governments into the Clinton Foundation. And these aren't governments we have great relationships with. It's not like it's the UK or France. These are Middle Eastern countries that are in turmoil, that that harbor terrorists, that promote Islam, so on and so forth. And Clinton is bought and paid for with that money. And my problem there is that when you're in power or you're asking to be in power and you've been bought, the conflict of interest is obvious. It's incredibly clear what's going on. But somehow she's able to do it. And I want to remind you that six cents on the dollar that goes into this Clinton Foundation finds its way to a charitable cause. Now, look, people like you and me, if if we elect to give to charity, we get to pick who we want to give our money to. I have no problem with them setting up a a charitable cause, a a nonprofit foundation. And if they want to spend 94 cents on the dollar to put in their pockets, well, that's the people who give them money. That's, That's their call, not mine. I have nothing to do with it. But when other countries are buying off our Secretary of State, and someone who is dreaming of being president, I got a problem with that. I do. And and the problem with these codes that I mentioned that, that allow this to happen, the laws that allow this to happen, they're so convoluted and they're so poorly pieced together that the common man can't figure it out. It's a language that normal people do not speak, and, and it's pieced together so poorly that there are giant loopholes created. Now, don't get me wrong. If there's a loophole there, jump through it. I'm all for it. But the government needs to be smarter than that and and make sure that things like this don't happen. But I feel like I'm asking too much. In fact, I, I probably am asking too much. Coming up next, I want to talk about the primaries in Washington last night and what happened in Albuquerque. The Gavin Mitchell Show. Do you need residential or commercial roof repairs, maintenance, or replacement in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? J. Bo Roofing has over 35 years of experience in the industry, and they have the know-how to keep you dry and comfortable. J. Bo Roofing also offers a roofing system that is warrantied against hail of any size. And this is a no-excuse warranty. J. Bo Roofing doesn't want their customers to cringe every time it hails. They want customers to have complete confidence that their roofing system is going to stand up to the task. Basically, J. Bo Roofing wants to stop the insanity lifetime roofing period re-roof once and be done a jbo roof product is aesthetically pleasing and tougher than anything you can find a jbo roof is so nice your neighbors will want it jbo lifetime roofing systems are strong as steel tougher than hail and guaranteed so it'll be the last roof you put on your house looking for a price get a no cost no obligation quote today at jabeau.com that's jabeau.com jbo roofing your long-term satisfaction is their immediate goal Attention business owners. We know that owning a business means getting things done right now. So if your right now list includes a new building, call the right now company. General Steel. We can design a building for your business quickly and save you thousands of dollars. That's right, thousands. You may think General Steel only builds large projects or that you can't afford General Steel quality. Well, check these prices. How about a 40 by 60 foot building for under $22,000 or even a 50 by 100 for under $35,000? That's right, a 5,000 square foot building for under $35,000. And these buildings all have General Steel quality. Best of all, you can still order a building and have it delivered in time to build this year. How's that for right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel 800-398-8309 800-398-8309 800-398-8309 that's 800-398-8309 Twisted Roads Trading Post in Crowley, Texas is your premier biker apparel, leather, and accessory store. Stop in and visit with brothers Ron and Carl Phillips. Twisted Roads Trading Post carries leather jackets, chaps, vests, accessories, gifts, and more. Open five days a week, Wednesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and on Sundays, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Got a motorcycle or trike to sell? Let Twisted Roads Trading Post be the place to go. Their park and sell lot is now available and anxious to show off your ride. Sewing, embroidery, and T-shirt printing services are also available throughout the week. 
Call today or visit TwistedRoadsTradingPost.com or find and lock them on Facebook. Located west of Crowley on FM 1187, then south on FM 1902. Go 1.3 miles and look for the flags. 817-768-8761. That's 817-768-8761. Twisted Roads Trading Post. If the flags are flying, we're open. Hey, everybody. Your pal Gavin Mitchell here from my friends at Texas Elite Landscape. We all have that embarrassing spot in our yard we just can't seem to get grass to grow. Or perhaps you're tired of pumping hundreds and thousands of dollars into your yard just to get it to turn green when the weather warms up. Or maybe the constant maintenance is just too much to bear. Well, my friends at Texas Elite Landscaping are the most respected synthetic grass installation specialist in North Texas. Locally owned and operated, they have installed over 1 million square feet of the highest quality grass made right here in the USA. And I know what you're thinking. Is it pet and child friendly? You bet it is. So whether you want your yard looking picture perfect year round, no matter what the season is, or perhaps you'd like a putting green in the backyard to keep your husband home on Saturdays, give my friends at Texas Elite Landscaping a call today. 214-298-7726. That's 214-298-7726. Or find them at TexasEliteLandscaping.com. Let's get back to the program. If you're sick of the garbage that comes out of Washington, D.C., then it's time to arm yourself with knowledge from the blue-collar professor. Here's your host, Dr. Gavin Mitchell. You can find the show each and every weekday, 5 p.m. Central on conservativeradionetwork.com. We are also on the 405 Media, K98 Talk, Sackheads Radio Media, and High Plains Radio as well. Special thanks to those guys for including us in their list. You can also find us each and every Saturday night, 8 p.m. on News and Information 570 KLIF in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That is our live offering. It gives you an opportunity to call in and be a part of the show if you would like. But if you are outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area, fear not. You can also pick it up on conservativeradionetwork.com or the 405 Media. So those guys have been Ron and... and uh, and John have been nice enough to carry that for us live. They stream it live, and so you can be a part of the show as well. I, I encourage you to do that. If you are looking for the show on demand, you can find it iTunes, Spreaker, TuneIn, and Google Play as well. Now, last night we had the primaries in Washington, and Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee, and so he did what he needed to do. He walked away with 76.2% of the vote. Uh, with about 70% of the precincts in as we speak. He will pick up all 44 delegates. Uh, He has 40 right now. And with that 40 currently, he needs 28 to achieve the nomination. So if he gets those other four, he'll need 24 moving forward. It's all but done there. The left is a little more interesting. Last night in Washington, I expected Bernie Sanders to win. I did. Uh, It's, it's a liberal state. Um, what what do you expect? It's it's a bunch of liberal hippies, if you want me to be honest. That's what they are. And so I expected Bernie Sanders to win that, and Clinton's equity is falling. With, with all these scandals and all this, this nonsense coming out about how she's misbehaved, she's in trouble. Well, Sanders sticks it to her, and this was a beating unlike Trump put on anybody. I mean, this this is one for the record books. 72.7% of the vote Sanders captured. He picked up 74 of the 101 available delegates. It was an absolute beatdown. Now, with the left, we're, we're moving toward the, the nomination being captured by Clinton. She needs, I'm looking at it, 70, 70 between 70 and 80 delegates is what she needs to capture the nomination. The problem is 537 of those are super delegates. She will not reach the nomination with the regular delegates. She will not hit the 2383 that she needs with regular delegates. The reason Bernie Sanders is still involved is because he believes wholeheartedly he can sway those super delegates. If for whatever reason, he can win the regular delegate vote, and he's within 300 now. If if he can pull that off, he thinks he convinced the superdelegates to swing his way. 
And it, it may be true. It may not be true. I don't know. I know Clinton's in trouble. We've already talked about that. A lot of people seem to think that at the convention, if, if Hillary catches an indictment before the convention, that, oh, the vice president's going to swing in, Joe Biden, and scoop up the nomination and move forward. I, I don't see that happening. That would be as troublesome for the Democratic Party as something like that happening with the Republican Party. That, that just wouldn't hold water. That's, that's not a good idea. But the votes aren't the only thing that happened last night that's worth mentioning. Because Donald Trump is the presumptive nominee, he's kind of on this tour. He wasn't in Washington last night where the primary was held. He was in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he held a big rally there at the convention center, and people show up like they do at Donald Trump's events. And of course there were protesters. I have zero problem with people exercising their right to assemble and exercising their First Amendment right to say what they would like, as long as it's not restricted speech. But when it stops becoming peaceful, that's when, one, it becomes illegal, and two, that's where I have a problem. That's that's where it becomes an issue for me. And as I got home last night, I turned on the TV, and they're showing what they're calling riots in the street. And I'm watching this situation unfold in Albuquerque. And what it looks like to me is just a bunch of young punks. It looks like a bunch of punks to me. And I'm watching them taunt the police. I'm watching them give gestures to the police. I'm even watching them throw rocks at the police. Now, the Albuquerque police deserve to be commended because they did a fine job of keeping the peace. They... They created barriers with their riot team and mounted patrol behind them, and they slowly walked the protesters back. They used smoke, little smoke bombs, to to break up the groups when they needed to. They used pepper spray when they had to, and, and they did a fine job. They did a great job. But at one point last night, this whole protest stopped being about political speech. And it started being about just becoming a nuisance and a problem and and being rowdy and, and rioting. It stopped being about, I'm not for Donald Trump. And it started being about, let me cause some problems. What is that? What is that about? That is not what this country does. That's what third world countries do. That's what you see on on late night TV, on the news channels about them reporting on elections in other countries. That's not how this works here at all, even a little bit. But the problem is these, these leftist liberals seem to think they're accomplishing something by doing this, and they're not. Do you think any person going into that convention center that was there to hear Trump speak, that was there to support Trump, was convinced by their actions, whether they were intimidated or not, to change their position. Not even a little bit. What they're doing is galvanizing the Trump movement. They're they're helping Donald Trump out. And I just watch these punks. That's There's no better word to describe it. They're just punks causing problems. And I'm thinking to myself, man, With the demographics I see here, I see a bunch of hippie kids is what I see. You know, 18, 19, 20, 21, probably up to 30. That's what I saw. And I thought, if if this is what's going on here and they're starting to get violent, California's coming up. It's home of the hippies. To me, that's where this thing's going to come to a head. It's not going to be in Cleveland. Cleveland might spill over. But it's going to be California where this thing gets violent and people get hurt and people may lose their life. And I'm sitting there watching this, thinking those thoughts. And the only solution I could come to is these police need to stomp this out. They need to make these punk kids examples so that that whoever has this idea in California thinks twice. Assemble peacefully. Chant your chants, whatever. Make your signs. But you better be peaceful. And if if they would have beat down a couple of those kids who threw rocks, then then maybe, maybe, and that's a big maybe, 
it's a deterrent to what happens in California. But the further I thought about it, they can't. They can't do anything but sit there and take it because of the whole Ferguson deal. This administration has made the police the criminals. The deal in Baltimore, you, you can go on and on. But this administration has, has made the police officers trying to protect our community and trying to keep the peace. He's made them the bad guys. So they can't stomp this out. They're, they're in a catch-22. And I just sat there disgusted. One of the Fox News commentators said, look, in California, put them in a box. Rope off an area. You're allowed to protest here. Do what you got to do. If you leave this box, we drop you. It's that simple. I love the idea. I think it's great. I think wherever Trump goes, the city needs to make them get a permit to assemble. That's what I think they need to do. I guarantee Donald Trump has to get permits. I don't think those permits should cover the protesters. Let the protesters get their own permits. Let them jump through the bureaucratic holes. And let's see if this is important enough to them to do that. The end result will be that they will, quote, occupy Wall Street somewhere in California, do what they got to do, be arrested and claim they're martyrs for for not following the law. That's that's how they'll play it. That's what they do. There's no two ways about it. But I'm just I'm disgusted at the left. I'm disgusted at Black Lives Matter. I'm disgusted at the protests. This isn't who we are and this isn't what we do. And we're so caught up in fighting for causes that people don't even care about. The people that stand up and fight for the transgender bathrooms, they don't care. Why are they fighting? The people that stand up and fight for religious persecution, for lack of a better term, they don't care. Why are they? They're fighting just to fight. And that's what the left does, because these people have been convinced they're victims too. And it just grows tired after a while. It grows tired of the same rhetoric, just with a different phrase attached. It grows tired watching people do this. And it grows tired when they do this and they incite violence and then they get dealt with and now they're suing and police officers are going to jail. I've just, I've had enough of all of that nonsense. Up next... Obama makes a trip to Vietnam, and the Chinese are not happy about it. The Gavin Mitchell Show. Are you tired of making payments to a security company that doesn't seem to have the same values as you and doesn't offer the most recent technology? American Defense Systems is a veteran-owned and operated security company specializing in home security and automation solutions to fit your lifestyle while keeping small business owners more connected to work while on the go. American Defense Systems makes practical recommendations for families to keep your home safe without trying to sell you a bunch of extra stuff. And for businesses, American Defense Systems wants to provide you with the company of knowing that your business is safe by allowing you the monitoring options you need without loading you up with too many extras. American Defense Systems' goal is to provide your home or business with an affordable and technically superior security and automation system. If you're not happy with your current security system or provider, set up a no-cost consultation today at AmericanDefenseSystems.com. That's AmericanDefenseSystems.com. American Defense Systems, proud to be a veteran-owned company. Uh, boy, man, I had a Rough night's sleep. Oh, boy. Whew. I got a letter from the IRS yesterday, and I, I just couldn't sleep. Man, my, I'm dying here. Somebody help me. IRS problems affect more than just your finances. If you're ready to take back control of your life and you owe more than $10,000, you need to call the tax doctor. Their expert staff can immediately protect you from the IRS and state collectors and get you the best possible tax settlement guaranteed. The IRS has recently released new programs geared in helping struggling taxpayers, where you may qualify to settle your tax debt and wipe out up to 85% or more of what you currently owe. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor right now. See if you qualify to pay less. 800-631-9123. 800-631-9123. 800-631-9123. Again, 800-631-9123. 
Do you believe in conservative politics, common sense issues, and the U.S. Constitution? So does Matt Locke. Who is Matt Locke? Well, Matt's just a guy that believes, like many of you, that our country is headed in the wrong direction. If you feel the same, then go to Matt's new website, thematlockshow.com. Matt is a friend of the Gavin Mitchell Show, and he's a conservative podcaster and talk show host who will shoot you straight and provide information that is important to the conservative listener. You'll hear political commentary, news, and he'll discuss the current issues that will affect you during this election season. Listen to Matt's daily podcast anytime on his website at thematlikeshow.com, spelled M-A-T-T-L-O-C-K-E, or find his show on Spreaker.com and TuneIn.com. He's also syndicated on ICR and the Internet's new conservative radio network. Join Matt and his guest on the Matt Locke Show daily at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific on conservativeradionetwork.com or listen to any of his 400 archive shows at any time on the thematlockshow.com. The Matt Locke Show, all things conservative politics. The following message is brought to you by Health Markets, your first choice when you need health insurance for your small business. Do you offer health insurance to your employees? Call us now and see if you can save money. Do you want to offer vision and dental to your employees? Call us. Do you think you're paying too much for your current health insurance? Call us. Do you want somebody else to do all the legwork and search thousands of health plans from over 180 health insurance companies nationwide? Call us. We're Health Markets, and thanks to a little-known solution, we could help your business save thousands of dollars on health insurance costs and save your employees money, too. Our service is free. Don't miss the great savings. Call now. 800-470-8021-800-470-8021-800-470-8021. That's 800-470-8021. Health Markets Insurance Agency is DBA of InSphere Insurance Solutions, Inc. Licensed in all states. Product availability varies. Hey, liberals, try rooting for your own country for a change. Our blue-collar educator of all things common sense does. Now, back to the Gavin Mitchell Show. I mentioned earlier, Matt and I sat down and recorded our weekly show. We have a two-hour weekly show, The Conservative Cartel. And it's Matlock and I getting together. No notes, no script, no talking points it's just us going back and forth sometimes we get a little silly sometimes we get serious it's off the top of our head facts from the research we've gathered over the week and we come together and and we just have a two-hour discussion about what's going on and sometimes we agree sometimes we don't but man i'm really proud of this show we get better at each week because you have to remember we're used to talking alone We're, we're used to doing a solo show And so it it takes some getting used to working with somebody else. But Matt and I seem to be on the same wavelength a lot of the time. And we're really proud of of what's going on. So if you want to hear that, you can find it at uh, conservativeradionetwork.com. It airs tonight, which is Wednesday night at midnight Eastern time. So it's 11 central. It airs from 10 to 12 Saturday night which if you turn into the conservative radio network.com, if you tune in, you can hear my live broadcast from eight to nine central. And then from nine to 11 central, you can pick up the conservative cartel. And then it runs again at four o'clock central time uh, on conservative radio network.com. You can go to Spreaker, look for ICRN. And we are one of the shows listed on there. We don't have a website or Twitter handle. It's just something we do each week for fun to give our listeners a little change up. And so I encourage you get out there and give that guy a listen. It's, it's something we're really proud of. The con man in chief, Barack Obama has made his way to Vietnam. And if you didn't know, there has been an embargo on arms sales to Vietnam for a long, long time. We have not been allowed to sell firearms to Vietnam. They're, they're a communist country anyway. Before we get into why Barack Obama is really there, I just want to point out that he has gone to another communist country. He went to Cuba, and just weeks after, Cuba came out and he's like, that guy's fake, we still hate America, he did no good, what a waste of time. He went over to Europe, to the UK, and the UK is like, who are you? And further severed relations with the U.K., things aren't good. Remember, Barack Obama sent back the gift 
that the U.K. sent over to George W. Bush, the bus of Winston Churchill. It may have even been before that when they sent it over. But he sent it back because he wanted Martin Luther King's head in the Oval Office, not Winston Churchill. And things haven't been good between the two countries for a long time. So everywhere he goes, he goes to Saudi Arabia, does the same thing. He is just leaving a path of destruction behind him everywhere he goes. Now he goes to another communist country. We know the communists are close to Barack Obama's heart. It's important to him. They think the way he does. They act the way he does. And he's all for them. So he goes there, but this has nothing to do with Vietnam. This has everything to do with China and these artificial islands that are built in the South China Sea. That's what this is about. Vietnam and China do not get along. Vietnam claims part of this territory as their own that China has claimed and has built these islands. There's there's a rift here. And Barack Obama is not happy at the Chinese threatening us for not being able to move to what the U.S. believes is international water. So he goes to this little country, this little communist country that China doesn't get along with, and he arms them. How do you think China responds? Exactly the way you think they would. They accuse him of trying to make the the region unstable. They accuse an outsider of butting into business that's not theirs. He is causing problems. Instead of standing up and looking China in the eye, he's going to the little brother and saying, hey, here's a gun, go use it. Moreover, this guy's on a world tour. He is on a world tour so that his next step can be the attorney general to the U.N. He said that's his goal. It's, it's been known that's his goal. That's what he's trying to do. And it takes a step closer to this ideal he has of one world government. I'm telling you here and now, if in your career you aspire to be president of the United States, and that is not the end of your career goals, if that's not the highest you could ever achieve, You are not worthy of the presidency, period, end of sentence. If there is something better and beyond leading the free world and leading the greatest country this this world has ever seen, then you do not deserve to be president of the United States. I've had it with this guy. Can you tell I'm fed up today? Because I, I am sick of liberals. I'm sick of this president. I'm sick of Hillary Clinton. Because they do this crap and they think that we're just going to believe whatever they say. It couldn't be further from the truth. It couldn't be any less accurate, the stuff that falls out of their mouth. Their intentions are obvious, but they won't fess up to it. There's no accountability with liberals. And that's just problem number one with the left. The Gavin Mitchell Show. Uh, boy, man, I had a rough night's sleep. Uh, boy, Whew. I got a letter from the IRS yesterday, and I, I just couldn't sleep. Man, my, I'm dying here. Somebody help me. IRS problems affect more than just your finances. If you're ready to take back control of your life and you owe more than $10,000, you need to call the tax doctor. Their expert staff can immediately protect you from the IRS and state collectors and get you the best possible tax settlement guaranteed. The IRS has recently released new programs geared in helping struggling taxpayers, where you may qualify to settle your tax debt and wipe out up to 85% or more of what you currently owe. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call the tax doctor right now. See if you qualify to pay less. 800-631-9123. 800-631-9123. 800-631-9123. Again, 800-631-9123. Do you need residential or commercial roof repairs, maintenance, or replacement in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? J. Bo Roofing has over 35 years of experience in the industry, and they have the know-how to keep you dry and comfortable. J. Bo Roofing also offers a roofing system that is warrantied against hail of any size, and this is a no-excuse warranty. J. Bo Roofing doesn't want their customers to cringe every time it hails. They want customers to have complete confidence that their roofing system is going to stand up to the task. Basically, J. Bo Roofing wants to stop the insanity, life 
lifetime roofing period. Re-roof once and be done. A Jabo Roof product is aesthetically pleasing and tougher than anything you can find. A Jabo Roof is so nice your neighbors will want it. Jabo lifetime roofing systems are strong as steel, tougher than hail, and guaranteed. So it'll be the last roof you put on your house. Looking for a price? Get a no-cost, no-obligation quote today at jabeau.com. That's jabeau.com. Jabo Roofing. Your long-term satisfaction is their immediate goal. Hey, everybody. Your pal Gavin Mitchell here from my friends at Texas Elite Landscape. We all have that embarrassing spot in our yard we just can't seem to get grass to grow. Or perhaps you're tired of pumping hundreds and thousands of dollars into your yard just to get it to turn green when the weather warms up. Or maybe the constant maintenance is just too much to bear. Well, my friends at Texas Elite Landscaping are the most respected synthetic grass installation specialist in North Texas. Locally owned and operated, they have installed over 1 million square feet of the highest quality grass made right here in the USA. And I know what you're thinking. Is it pet and child friendly? You bet it is. So whether you want your yard looking picture perfect year round, no matter what the season is, or perhaps you'd like a putting green in the backyard to keep your husband home on Saturdays, give my friends at Texas Elite Landscaping a call today. 214-298-7726. That's 214-298-7726. Or find them at TexasEliteLandscaping.com. Attention business owners, we know that owning a business means getting things done right now. So if your right now list includes a new building, call the right now company. General Steel. We can design a building for your business quickly and save you thousands of dollars. That's right, thousands. You may think General Steel only builds large projects or that you can't afford General Steel quality. Well, check these prices. How about a 40 by 60 foot building for under $22,000 or even a 50 by 100 for under $35,000? That's right, a 5,000 square foot building for under $35,000. And these buildings all have General Steel quality. Best of all, you can still order a building and have it delivered in time to build this year. How's that for right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel 800-398-8309 800-398-8309 800-398-8309 that's 800-398-8309 If you happen to drive by the studios during a commercial break and you see a guy on the roof waving an American flag, that's our blue-collar doctor of common sense. And now here he is, your host, Dr. Gavin Mitchell. God bless the great state of Texas. I got three stories coming at you hard and fast, all from Texas. This is breaking news that just came across on Fox News. The state of Texas is suing the Obama administration over its directive to U.S. public schools to let transgender students use the bathrooms and locker rooms that match their gender identity, Governor Greg Abbott said Wednesday. They are going after the Obama administration for this directive because they have threatened to pull federal funds if they didn't follow it. And Texas says, you know what? No dice. We're going to court. Eleven other states have joined in this. And the the piece ends with this paragraph. Texas was a likely candidate to rush to the courthouse first. Abbott sued the Obama administration more than two dozen times when he was attorney general, a pace that his successor, Republican Kim Paxson, has kept up since taking office last year. Good for them, good for Texas, good for the 11 states that joined in. I've had enough. I'm fed up in case you can't tell, and I am glad to see that there are people out there in positions to fight this tyrant that we call president. In another story out of Corpus Christi, Texas, an atheist activist named Patrick Green, he has a record of repeatedly bringing lawsuits that many consider predatory. And that they have no merit but are designed to threaten and harass defendants into abandoning actions that are perfectly legal in order to avoid or end the lawsuit. Green this time was suing Abundant Life Fellowship when Pastor Rick Milby started building a 230-foot cross on his church's property. Green sued him claiming that a church's erecting of a cross on private property is unconstitutional. Why? because a local mayor and city council member attended the church's groundbreaking ceremony. Here's where it takes a little turn for the best. Judge Missy 
Metairie, M-E-D-A-R-Y, of the 347th District Court of Nueces County, allowed Green to enter into a court-approved settlement. And in the settlement, he confesses that the lawsuit was baseless and without merit. And he is also bound by the court's order to stop bringing frivolous lawsuits in the future, lawsuits which are designed to prevent Americans from freely exercising or expressing faith. Good for those people in Corpus Christi, Texas. Another stand, another win when we just fight back. It is a great thing. Now, I want to close the show with this today. And, and I want to let you know, I am not a member of the First Baptist Church of Dallas. I am not. But it is a good church. It is a Bible-based church, and it is right in the heart of downtown Dallas. And it has been around for over 100 years, 106 years, 12,000 members in this church. The pastor, Pastor Robert Jeffers, has injected himself into this political season. He does a lot of appearances on shows radio and TV, does a lot of appearances at campaigns, events. He has put himself out there. And I, I don't know that I'm a fa- if I'm a fan of that or not. It doesn't matter to me because he, he is a good Christian man. Well, he went on a Washington, D.C. radio show yesterday or the day before, and he made the comment that the greatest threat to religious liberty that we face today, it is not ISIS and it is, it is not the Taliban, It's the Chamber of Commerce. Well, why does he say that? Do you remember back when these transgender bathroom laws and these these religious liberty laws were going through different states, namely North Carolina? What happened? These major corporations, including the NBA, the NFL, so on and so forth, attempted to strong arm these states. They they attempted to say, look, we're going to take our business and go elsewhere if you don't do what we want you to do. That's why Jeffers makes that comment. Even though these corporations do business in countries like Saudi Arabia, where you get your head chopped off if you come out saying you're gay, they'll do business there, and that's just fine. But not in North Carolina. So that, that's the justification behind what Pastor Jeffers was saying. Now, Dr. Jeffers last week decided to throw a community event. All people were welcome. Everybody, church members, non-church members. Black, white, green, yellow, gay, straight, transgender, it didn't matter. You were welcome. The police department showed up. They were invited. The mayor showed up. He was invited. The police chief showed up. He was invited. And they had a great day. Did some community outreach. They did their thing, right? It was was a good day. And First Baptist Church of Dallas decided to enter into a little partnership with the city to help out any way they could. They're even offering free counseling service to the the law enforcement officers of the city of Dallas. If, if you need counseling, you're welcome to go there and you can go there for free because First Baptist Church of Dallas is interested in being part of the community. They want to help. They're there to serve. They're a Bible-based church. Well, a local LGBT elemental P group has come out and demanded that the mayor— the police chief, the police department, and the city of Dallas sever their ties with First Baptist Dallas because they didn't like Pastor Jeffers' comments about the Chamber of Commerce. If you walk into the Dallas City Hall, there is a flag draped from the second floor that falls almost to the, to the first floor, the actual floor of the building. And it's a rainbow flag. It's bigger than any American flag out there, any bigger than any Texas flag. Dallas hasn't tried to pull the garbage that was pulled in Houston with that city ordinance over the bathrooms and all that. But City Hall's a very gay-friendly area, right? So they don't know what to do. They haven't commented on this. They don't know which way to go. They're not careful they're going to break this city apart at the seams. My point in bringing this up is this is what the left does. When they don't win, when they don't get their way, when you don't give them the attention they want, They begin attacking you for no good reason whatsoever. They see what's going on in Austin with this lawsuit, with other things like that, and they're losing here in Texas. And so they begin to attack people with threats of lawsuits and so on and so forth. And all they do is cause problems. When they don't get their way, 
they throw a fit. That's how the left works, ladies and gentlemen. It's that simple. It really is. That's going to do it for today. I can't believe we're already out of time. Remember, in the words of the great Ray Wiley Hubbard, on the days I keep my gratitude higher than my expectations, I have really good days. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Gavin Mitchell Show, The Blue Collar Professor, produced in Fort Worth, Texas. If you like what you just heard, subscribe on iTunes and Spreaker.com. These and other links can be found on our website at thegavinmitchellshow.com. Be sure to tell your friends and colleagues about the Blue Collar Professor's daily podcast. Join us again next time as we take the liberals to school. All opinions expressed by the host or guests on this series are solely their opinions and do not reflect the views, policies, or positions of the Gavin Mitchell Show or its affiliates. This has been a Ron Phillips Pinnacle Broadcast Holdings production.